Good morning, teens. Today is Sunday, January 25th. Our topic for today, faith makes it right. And this is coming from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Before we get started today, you need your supplies, your Sunday school notebook, whatever it is that you like to write with, and your Bible to use as a reference. So let's get started. The price is right. The Price is Right has been a game show staple in American homes for decades. This game show began in 1956 and was first hosted by Bill Cullen. However, the show was revamped in 1972 and was hosted by its most well-known host, Bob Barker, for approximately 35 years. Presently, The Price is Right airs on CBS television stations and has been hosted by former comedian Drew Carey since 2007. The game show is named The Price is Right because it centers around contestants knowing the prices of items. To start, four players are randomly selected from the studio audience and invited to come on down by the announcer to take their place in the contestants' row. They are shown a prize. Each contestant makes a bid as to the approximate price of the prize. The contestant who bids closest to the actual prize, price of the prize without going over the prize price, is invited to come on stage with the host to play a pricing game like Plinko, the clock game, and Danger Price. The first three contestants to make it from contestants row spin a price wheel to see who can come closest to a dollar without going over in up to two spins to determine who will go to the showcase at the end of the show. The second three contestants from the contestants row do the same thing. Once the final two contestants make it to the showcase showdown, they are presented with a package of prizes. They bid on the prize package, and the person who bids closest to the value of the prize package without going over wins the prize package from the showcase showdown. Imagine life is like the Price is Right game show. You are called from the studio audience to compete. To get out of contestants' row, you must bid on the value of God keeping you, protecting you, until you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. This is known as God prevenient or preventing grace. What value would you put on God's preventing grace? Next, you must participate in one of the main stage games. You are asked to put a price on the value of God saving your life. This is known as God's justifying grace. It is what forgives our sins. What price would you bid for God's justifying grace? And finally, you make it to the showcase showdown and you are asked to bid on the value of God making you more like Jesus. This is known as God's sanctifying grace. It is what changes our hearts to make us like Jesus. What value would you give God's sanctifying grace? Thank God Jesus paid the price for us and the price was right. In fact, it was priceless. So keeping it real, have you ever watched The Price is Right? What did you like or dislike about the game show? In your own words, describe the price that Jesus paid for us when he died and was raised to new life. So in your notebook, you're going to tell me what you like about The Price is Right. I do remember watching this with my grandmother, and it was always fun. And my favorite game was Plinko. It seemed like it was the easiest way to win a lot of money. And I also want you to describe the price that Jesus paid for us when he died and when he was raised from the dead. Keeping it biblical. So today you're going to be reading Romans 5 verses 1 through 11. You can take some time to do that so you can go ahead and pause the video now. So today's Bible lesson builds off of last week's lesson focused upon the discussion of justification by faith in Romans 4. In fact, today's Romans 5 scripture begins with the word, therefore, to indicate the bridge between Romans 4 and 5. So what is justification? 
To justify something means to pronounce guiltless or to be treated just as if I've never sinned. In Romans 4, Paul made it clear that we are pronounced guiltless from our sins and treated just as if we've never sinned based upon our faith in Jesus Christ, not due to our works. Our justification makes peace with our sinful selves and gives us peace with God. As believers, our justification through faith in Jesus means we are no longer enemies of God and have no need to fear God's wrath. The price that is right for us to experience justification is Jesus' death and our faith in the power of Jesus' death to render us guiltless. Our faith in the power of Jesus' death and resurrection to cancel our sin is the price for us to experience new life in Jesus Christ. Do you believe that Christ's death and resurrection have the power to free you from spending eternity separated from God? Do you believe that Christ's death and resurrection have the power to free you from the change that hold us back in life? Do you believe that Christ's death and resurrection have the power to free you to love God wholly and our neighbors in a way that you love yourself? If we have faith through Christ's sacrifice, we have peace, hope, love, and power over sin. Additionally, Additionally, just as we receive the benefits of Christ's suffering, there are benefits to our own suffering. When we suffer as Christ suffered, our suffering produces endurance in us. We are able to withstand the challenges of life just as Christ did. Paul writes, endurance produces character. Our spiritual identity becomes more like Christ. He then says, character produces hope. We are a, we are able to believe in a positive outcome no matter how dark the situation is just like Christ did when he overcame sin and death. Paul concludes that hope never disappoints us. Why? Because when we operate in the hope of Christ we experience God's love and we're surely never disappointed. And so even as youth you can respond with joy and triumph in the midst of trials in your life. Yes, you will suffer sometimes, but so did Christ. But as Paul writes, when you suffer you will learn to endure and build character, which produces hope and allows you to experience the love of God through Jesus Christ. It is a process, but the price has already been paid by Jesus, which will allow you to be victorious. It is the reason that Christ directed us as followers to rejoice when we may experience persecution. Paul's statement in Romans 5, 3 through 5, might be based on the process of refining metals. Do you know that the process for refining metals involves purifying to remove all impurities. It requires high temperatures to be used to remove those impurities. But the end result is a refined precious metal. We too must go through a process of being refined. We have impurities in us in the form of sin. The high temperatures of persecution and trials during our life remove those impurities. When we allow Christ to refine us, as believers, our temporary troubles are a means of refining us. Are you in the process of being refined? Aren't you glad that Jesus paid the price for us? Because he paid the price, we are justified by faith in Christ. Likewise, aren't you glad that Jesus demonstrated for us how to go through the process of being refined? Because of this example, we can withstand the challenging times that we experience in life and come out as pure gold. So keeping it together, the process that produces a butterfly is known as complete metamorphosis, and it involves stages like stage one, the egg stage, the beginning of life. A lot of you learned this when you were in grade school. Um, stage two, the larva stage, the caterpillar stage when it hatches from the egg. And stage three, the pupa stage. This is where the chrysalis um, stage in which the caterpillar is in a cocoon and it transitions into a beautiful butterfly. And then stage four, the adult stage, the final stage when a butterfly emerges, which is wonderful to watch every summer. We um, buy the butterfly uh, kits where we look at how the butterfly starts off from start to finish. And then after they grow, we release them outside. So have you ever undergone a metamorphosis as a Christian? 
Where are you in your transformation process? Maybe you are a new Christian or simply have not developed beyond the egg stage of your Christian development. Maybe you are no longer a baby Christian, but have moved to the stage of development where you are consuming the teaching of Jesus Christ. Maybe you are in the stage of transforming from one who simply consumes the word of God to a Christian who lives the word of God. Perhaps you are a mature Christian who studies the word of God, lives in the word of God, and shares the word of God with others. No matter where you are in our transformation process, there's one important thing to remember. Our transformation is only possible because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and move of the Holy Spirit in our lives. In her song, Black Butterfly, Denise Williams sings, While you slept, the promise was unkept. But your faith was as sure as the stars. Now you're free and the world has come to see just how proud and beautiful you are. So fly, black butterfly. And lastly for today, in your notebook, you are going to draw a timeline that shows a transition that you have been through. Hopefully your timeline will show a positive transformation that you have experienced. However, your timeline may reflect a negative transition you have experienced, okay? So you can also put that um, in your notebook as well, okay? So you're just creating a timeline just like you do in school when you draw the little lines and you have the different little ticks there that represent different times, okay? And I want you to show a positive transformation. I really want to focus on something that is good so if you want to focus on last year have you how you have grown or matured or you have done things a little bit differently that's totally up to you but it has to be something um in your life that has changed you okay thank you teens i hope that you have a wonderful wonderful sunday